Welcome everyone. So today we'll be taking a look at Ubuntu 18.04. Um, today's video was actually supposed to be about Deepin uh, because of the whole news about the Deepin store uh, and them removing what people would consider to be a security issue and spyware and whatnot. But Deepin requires you to install it. Uh, and it doesn't really give you an option to try it without installing, so I decided to make a, a video about uh, Ubuntu. I know this is pretty late and a lot of videos have been made about it, but uh, I haven't used this system in like a, a year or two, so yeah, let's see what's new. So, of course you have your top panel um, and you have the side application launcher. Now let's take a look at activities real quick. Okay, so that's OBS. Um, of course, I installed it for this video. So activities shows the programs that you have. And also, this looks to me like it's um, workspace. Uh, and right here at the bottom, you can take a look at your applications, which, yep. Just as expected, it's kind of sluggish on my computer because the um, GNOME desktop environment is not very lightweight. Let's take a look at the system monitor, which is taking some time to load up. And I think it closed. Wow, let's try that again. All right, so while that's taking uh, some time to load, let's take a look at the launcher here. So of course it offers to install it. You got Firefox as your main web browser. It's pretty typical. Same thing for Thunderbird. Oh, there we go. Resources. 2.3 gigabytes of uh, RAM. Yeah, definitely more than the typical distro. Like usually it's like at a 1.8. CPU is being used a lot. Yeah, of course. All right, so files. Let's take a look at the file manager. I do like the uh, file manager though does look nice. So you have your typical folders here and then this is for my OBS recordings. Yeah. You can uh, change the view if you want. You can make them uh, up close. This also changes the icon on the desktop. Um, you can sort them differently, show the hidden files, all that type of stuff. Okay, next up we have Rhythmbox, which I mean, I think it's a pretty good music player. I've tried it before. I do personally prefer Clementine. But Rhythm Box is pretty nice as well. LibreOffice Writer, of course. It's pretty standard. Uh, Ubuntu software, let's take a look at that. So of course you have your categories. Um, see audio and video. Um, well, let's look at the music players. Okay, so so far it's showing me what I have installed for some reason. This isn't... Um, so right now it's showing everything I have installed. I mean it has featured... But for some reason... It's not really showing 
like the ones that I don't have. I mean, I don't have these ones. That's weird. I remember uh, the previous version had the same problem. Like uh, when I accessed the software center, I just wouldn't be able to see any uh, programs, even even using the search. So let's see if the search works. So let's take a look at VLC. Okay, so the search works. There's also a simple screen recorder, of course. Yeah. Yeah, the search is, uh, that's how I installed OBS, actually. There we go. Yeah, so the search works without a problem. So if you're looking for something specific, like let's say the Sublime Text Editor, you know, you can just install it real easily, but say if you're looking for new software, if you're just exploring, I guess this, may, maybe it's because I haven't like fully installed the distro, because so far uh, with every video I have not been installing the distros, I'm just uh, booting them from the live installation media and that's it. So may maybe that's why, I don't know. But I mean the fact that the search works, the fact that you could just look up, let's, see, let's say Clementine, and just install it really easily, that's nice. Uh, so there's help. Amazon. I've never actually clicked on Amazon. Uh, does it open a link to the browser? Or does it open it separately as an application? Yeah, it's just a link to the, a link that opens up the browser, which Firefox. Um, I doubt this is the most recent version. Yeah, two versions behind. But of course you can easily update it. So that's that for the application launcher. If you open up an instance of an application, for example OBS, you can right click on it. And that's weird. Isn't that how you, um, oh, so you add it to your favorites. Okay, so I guess that's what it means. Uh, yeah. So I was looking to for something that says pin, but apparently you just have to add it to your favorites. So if you want to keep it here, just right click and click add to favorites. Um, looking at the panel, uh, it's transparent now. So the theming is kind of different, but if you take a look at the files, so this is the typ typical Ubuntu look, but if you put it at max, like uh, max resolution or whatever it takes up part of the panel as well just like with before and so there's also preferences that you can take a look at um, okay so let's take a look at the uh, settings real quick or actually, before that, let's see all the programs that they have to offer. So, uh, you got some card games here, Amazon, calculator, calendar, cheese, files, <coughs> Firefox as the browser, Gparted for partitioning, uh, input method for your keyboard, different language support, the LibreOffice suit, some more games. OBS, of course, I installed myself. Uh, what's this? Let's take a look at this. No, oh, so this is some sort of a chat, I guess. Remote desktop client. Er. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with this. If I, if anyone knows about this. Uh, do explain it would be interesting uh, also for some reason I don't know why these uh, panel icons are so far apart that looks kind of weird yeah I don't know why they're so far apart <clears throat> you got settings shot well
course, software updating, text editor, Thunderbird. You can change up your startup applications, terminal, of course, system monitor. You can play videos, and you got the Ubuntu software. Which also, a lot of distros for some reason. Oops. Okay. A lot of distros for some reason. Uh, they don't have the keyboard shortcut, which is Control Alt T for the terminal, which I think it comes in pretty handy. And so this is the typical uh, Ubuntu terminal look. You can get rid of the menu bar if you want, and also if you right-click on Preferences, if you like to see, uh, or if you want to change the theme, you can yourself. But if you want to make it a bit transparent, you can do that as well which I think that looks a bit better. Uh, Alright, so let's take a look at the settings real quick. I must admit though, I'm not really a big fan of the full screen menu. Which, you can actually change a bunch of stuff. You can change the panel, you can remove the uh, application launcher, and you can also change the menu uh, from the uh, software center itself. So. Okay, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, background. So it's got some uh, pre-installed backgrounds here. What's this one? Yeah, I'm not really big on these particular backgrounds. I guess I'll just go with this one. Then you have your dock settings. Which you can adjust the size if you want. I think that looks better. Um, you can also change the positioning. That looks more like a menu, but still, I mean, you have. You're still gonna, it doesn't really let you remove it. And you can also auto hide it. Which I've tried that before, and it, um, like, let's make this full screen. Like, it is kind of sluggish. I don't know. Again, my laptop isn't the best, so. Notifications, you can choose if you want pop ups or lock screen notifications, and you can choose. From what to get uh, notifications? You got your search settings, language and region, cursor size, you can change that. I usually just stick to default for these type of stuff, but as you can see here, these are the options online accounts, pretty nice if you have Gmail or you want to access Facebook or whatever. Privacy. Problem reporting is on. I mean, I personally don't mind this. I don't see, you know, I, I don't see, like, what's the big deal with it. I mean, if they take it a step further, at that point, there's something to be angry about but for something as simple as this you know I mean until it gets more drastic or until they start like actually spying or stealing actual data uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about um, yeah but of course I mean I, I don't really use Ubuntu so I don't really care for it but I mean, the thing is, is that you can't turn it off. I mean, it's just a click of a button. Um, and, and again, I, I understand that it's controversial. It's just that I guess for now, it's not that big of a deal if it's to help improve uh, Ubuntu. But um, yeah, if it does get worse, then uh, the users have like every right to stop supporting it to bash, bash canonical and whatnot. So, 
Yeah, you got the sound settings. You can change the volume, uh, recording volume. You can choose what kind of uh, sound effects. I don't know if you can hear those. And uh, application volume. Power, network, devices. You can change your mouse settings. I mean, th this is, of course, you know, all basic stuff. I mean, let's take a look at um, appearance. If there are any settings like that. But I remember there's like themes and whatnot. Let's see, tweak, anything. Wow, <laughs> that's weird. I remember there were themes that you could uh, choose. Well, I mean, that's oops, that's about it. Um, <laughs> like there, there aren't really that many options. You have your settings here, but I mean. Wow. Okay, so this was uh, definitely a shorter video compared to the previous one. Sorry if I didn't really go much in depth. I mean, that's that's really part of the reason why I decided to ditch Ubuntu is um, it doesn't really give you many options um, to like tweak it with. Um, like you kind of have to stick with the theme that they kind of envisioned for it, which is kind of lame in my opinion reminds me of windows uh <clears throat> with how it's so difficult to install uh themes for windows 10 uh this kind of reminds me for uh it, it reminds me of that because you have to go like if you want to change the menu you can change it to the arc menu but i mean that's not even popping up again it might be because i haven't installed the system itself and haven't gone through all the um necessary system up, upgrade or updates and whatnot but still you do have to like install the uh, tweaks yourself um, and extensions yourself which I don't understand why they didn't just include that in the main settings um, one thing I do like is how like uh, when it comes to applications it's pretty minimalistic I mean you have pretty much everything you need you don't really need as a like as a system like right off the bat before installing it you don't really need like a ton of programs of course if you have specific needs like if you want to change your browser or if you want like VLC or something like that you can install it yourself um, but yeah it, it uses the uh, GNOME desktop environment which I just personally am not a fan of like I don't like how it's more sluggish in comparison to others um, and uh, yeah you know like you really have to like install Ubuntu for yourself uh, and start installing stuff on it like tweaks and whatnot in order to make it look the way you want to um, but like as the way it is like right now I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna try to start up Firefox, and uh, I mean, I I don't know if you can tell, but like the movement is like kind of sluggish, like, um, and also when the dock appears, look at that, it's not even appearing right now. <laughs> yeah, so I'd rather just have Plank or whatever. Uh, instead of this dock, which I can't even remove, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same way. I'm personally not a fan of Ubuntu anymore. Uh, I don't really like the direction it's been heading. Um, like at least vanilla Ubuntu. Um, I haven't tried uh, L Ubuntu or K Ubuntu or Kubuntu, however you pronounce them. I haven't tried those yet, so I, I may try them in the future, but um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, as a whole, 
I'm not gonna say I don't like it because after all this is the first distro I started off with uh, I just don't like the direction in which they're heading um, but one thing I do like is that the it's very popular very easy you know for beginners um, and another thing that I like is that it has a lot of support uh, and generally if you have any issues or questions or whatever if you look it up online or you look up in the forums or whatever there's a ton and I mean a ton of um, support and help um, regarding to whatever issues you may have so that's one thing I like uh, I like that it just supports a lot of uh, packages and whatnot it's you know typically like the software center has uh, more than enough uh, from what you may need except one thing that it doesn't have is Kden Live but you can easily install it yourself so yeah and, and again like if you don't like the panel the way it is or if you don't like dock you can or even the menu um, you can actually um, change that yourself it just you have to get out of your way to do it so so yeah that's pretty much it for this uh, video um, yeah so thanks for watching and have a good one